Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss a relatively recent research that basically creates something extremely groundbreaking. In essence, a fully three-dimensional map of an actual brain that doesn't just show us the location of neurons, but actually shows us the connections and even the interaction of neurons during certain complex behavioral interactions. But there is a small caveat. Here we're not talking about human brain, we're not even talking about a brain of a typical mammal, we're talking about a brain of one of the smallest animals when it comes to biological studies. This was a brain of a fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, the fly that most of us I think are familiar with. And the fly that's often used in research, due to its relatively simple genetics, relatively rapid life cycle, and its ability to produce large number of offspring. And though originally this fly was from Africa, it's now technically spread everywhere and has officially become a relatively common pest. But because these are still animals and are sexually dimorphic and even possess somewhat complex behavior when it comes to attracting mates, such as for example conducting certain dances or even singing, naturally this made these flies extremely valuable for different types of biological research. And so we know these flies do possess relatively complex behavior, despite their tiny sizes and of course their tiny brains. As a matter of fact, there's quite a lot of studies documenting their complex courtship behavior, suggesting that even for these tiny tiny creatures, there is already so much complexity inside their brains. And so in the last two decades, scientists have even discovered that approximately 60% of genes inside these flies are somewhat similar to the genes in humans with up to 75% of known human diseases having an actual match to genes in fruit flies, which has always made them an intriguing target for study because of how easy they are to grow in a lab and because of how easy it was to manipulate their genes and then study various effects when it came to various sicknesses. But more importantly, it made these flies a perfect target for a lot of emerging fields in biology. And that's because we understand their bodies and everything about them so well that learning new biology based on these flies becomes extremely easy. And ever since the early 2000s, so basically in the last two decades, there's this one field that started to develop very rapidly because of many different advances in the fields of neuroscience. This is a young field known as connectomics, a kind of a sub-branch of neuroscience that doesn't just deal with neurons, but actually deals with connections of neurons and the effects these connections have on different types of behavior. And the purpose of this field is to create a kind of a map of neural connections that shows us what happens inside the brain during certain types of activity. Here's one of the earlier examples from the human brain based on 20 different subjects. And one of the reasons this field is so important is of course our realization that when it comes to brain, nothing is really localized to one single point. Any kind of a brain activity or any kind of an action or a thought usually depends on structures in a lot of different locations inside the brain, which very often produces something like this. It essentially activates separate networks, with for example different thoughts or different actions resulting in different types of networks, or to be more exact, different types of connectomes. And so today this connectome has become an extremely important part of interpretation of brain data, extremely important in neuroimaging. But so far all of the previous research, especially in humans, has been extremely difficult to conduct and all of these connectomes are extremely rudimentary and actually don't even teach us much because things here are just way too complicated. And so in order to learn more about this field and in order to of course understand everything a little bit better, researchers studying connectomes decided to start with a brain we understood really well. The brain of these little guys. And of course these little guys too. And their brains were perfect. They're tiny, they're actually the size of a sand grain, but are still able to produce complex behavior and of course behavior that we often observe in a lot of different animals. And so by being able to create a connectome of a fruit fly, this would allow researchers to essentially have a kind of a base and of course a lot of different methods that could then be applied to more complex animals, including eventually humans. And what's really intriguing about their brains is that despite their tiny size and despite the fact that they only have about 140,000 neurons, they're actually able to create at least 50 million connections, allowing them to have this complex behavior. But just to give you a comparison, our brains contain 86 billion neurons and form trillions of connections in a process. So there's obviously a huge difference. But baby steps, right? 
And so let's talk about this recent research and what exactly the scientists were able to achieve. And here the study by Philip Schlegel and his team, that was just published in Nature, for the first time ever, was able to create a complete three-dimensional map and a complete multi-connectome of a typical Drosophila. And well, technically that's basically it. That was the point of the study and that's what they achieved. But I guess here to understand the importance of this, let's briefly discuss a bit of a history and put this in a better context. And here we have to start with a study by Sidney Brenner, John Graham White, Elvin Southgate and J.N. Thompson, who back in 1986 released a study that took them approximately 20 years to complete. By literally using colored pencils, they were able to trace 302 neurons inside a typical roundworm C. elegans, creating the first ever complete connectome of one of the simplest animals. Here these worms only contain 300 neurons, but even here this took years and years. And even back then, researchers already understood that in order to understand the nervous system, we had to create these maps. But it wasn't until early 2000s, when computers became powerful enough, that it suddenly became possible to start mapping all of this using digital media. And naturally, the next target was the fly. But even here, the complexity of the procedure is still quite enormous. For every single brain, and we're talking about a super tiny brain, like I mentioned it was just the size of a sand grain, they had to be cut into tiny tiny pieces, producing individual layers that could then be scanned in order to identify individual neurons which the computers would then connect into a larger image. And so here every individual layer had to be processed in order to map one of the tiniest brains in the animal kingdom. Luckily for the researchers, Google became interested in this as well, and so a lot of resources came from Google directly. And within just a few years, the first section of the brain became mapped. Here's actually one of these sections, with one of the first studies released back in 2021. But here Google also helped with the AI. By using artificial intelligence, it became possible to quickly identify individual neurons and to then trace various connections which allowed the scientists to create these networks super fast. And so for the past few years, scientists studying this created larger and larger structures, eventually tracing the entire brain network and discovering every single connection forming the entire connectome of a fruit fly. Here we're talking about 139,255 neurons, 50 million connections, and basically a brain of an actual adult fly able to do all of those complex behaviors that I mentioned previously. And so here we finally had an entire brain of a fruit fly mapped with ridiculous precision. Every single connection, every single neuron, and the entire brain network, including every potential structure, even identifying every individual function. But in order to achieve this, they had to do something absolutely ridiculous. 7,000 individual tiny slices of a brain from a fruit fly and 21 million images that had to be then compiled into one single map. Naturally, without the use of artificial intelligence, in this case produced by Princeton University, this would have taken an extremely long time. But by using these new methods, all of this was achievable within just a few years. And we of course had some unusual discoveries. Out of approximately 8,500 known and named cells, half of them, approximately 4,500, were completely new to science. Basically, they discovered neurons we've never seen before and obviously have no idea what they do. But because this is a connectome, it shows us everything in regards to function and precisely maps every single type of behavior and how various neurons interact in this tiny brain. And so because of this complexity and because this method now exists, this can now be applied to much more complex animals. Although naturally, even in animals like lab rats that contain 70 million neurons, or approximately 700 times more than this fruit fly, we're still possibly decades away from being able to create something similar. And intriguingly, because all of this is essentially inside a computer now, now researchers can start manipulating the brain activity inside this brain and start simulating different types of behavior. For example, in one of the additional papers, Philip Shu and his team have already used this map to simulate the extension of proboscis, or basically that tiny straw that flies have to suck in sugars, in a very similar way how they do this in real life by just activating these virtual neurons. And so essentially now we can study these circuits and even create these virtual behaviors without using actual flies by just mimicking everything inside a computer. Which by itself is a monumental achievement. It allows us to understand how various circuits in the brain work, what exactly they do, it allows us to mimic them, 
providing clues about various types of complex behavior, and I guess more importantly, taking us just a little bit closer to the ultimate goal of understanding human brain. Although here it's important to remember, it took us nearly four decades to go from a worm to a fly, or from 300 neurons to approximately 130,000 neurons. The next target, a lab mouse, is way way more complex, with the ultimate target, us, having so much more complexity that um, if we assume the same progress, it might take up to 100 years. Nevertheless, this is a really important first step, and a step that one day might help us understand everything about ourselves, and of course lead to some major breakthroughs in a lot of different fields. The medical field, the computer science fields, and honestly at this point, possibly all fields. This is actually a pretty big achievement, so at this point, it's even hard to imagine where all of this goes. But because this is the first study on this, and because this is basically just the beginning, in the next years we'll probably hear a lot more about this, and I'm sure there are going to be so many more discoveries, and so many more incredible achievements when it comes to connectomes. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.